Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with award-winning jazz pianist and composer David Lopato. He opened up a length about his new 2023 CD called Short Stories. It is an eclectic assemblage of eight original compositions and one cover that spans four decades of writing, containing a wide range of musical genres and styles. His influences run far, wide, and deep, from traditional jazz, blues, and rock to avant-garde improvisation and the musics of Africa, Brazil, and Asia, and most notably, Indonesia, where he lived for a year as a Fulbright scholar. We cover his journey in music and around the globe, the future ahead, and so much more. Enjoy this interview. Hey, it's great to meet you, David. Thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz today. Oh, sure, no problem. So before we get into your latest album, I want to know, you know, the musician community really went through quite a thing over the last three and a half years with COVID. How did you survive the pandemic and how has it changed the way that you do things or view the world now? Well, uh, for one, um, I moved out of the city three years ago. That's actually at the beginning of the pandemic. So um, I wasn't involved that much with the gig scene down there. And um, I still, uh, I teach at the New School University in Manhattan. So uh, I, I kept going down there to, to work a couple of days a week, but um, it's been, uh, it, it didn't really affect me that much in terms of my work situations. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's a life changer just moving out of the city. I was there for 42 years and um, I live upstate now a couple of hours so near, near Woodstock. So uh, um, yeah, now that people are, back out again i mean uh it's it's different for me now because i'm not down there um so my life my life would have changed anyway at that point uh, regardless of the pandemic i don't know if that answers your question or not no no it does it does and i and i want to get into the new album too talk to me a little bit about how this album came about well uh i've been writing for almost 50 years and I haven't recorded that much. I, I guess this is my fifth um, record under my own name. And uh, so I have a lot of compositions that haven't been recorded yet. And I, that's, so some of them go back uh, well, 30, 30 years um, or more. And I've been playing with um, these guys for a long time, the musicians on this recording. Most, most of them, not all of them. Uh, so... It just seemed like the right time. I tend to put a record out every six years or so, and it was about time. So uh, I just called them up and we did it. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I added two percussionists, which I hadn't used on any previous recordings. They were always either solo, trio, or um, well, there was one large ensemble piece, the, the very Indonesian gamelan influenced recording, the, the last one before this one, but. Uh, but uh, this time I hired two extra percussionists who were both fantastic musicians. And um, uh, just uh, it, was a, it was an opportunity to, to arrange and perform the music in a different way than I, I'm, I'm used to doing. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? Uh, well, um, <laughs> great enjoyment. And um, my... My music runs the, the, the gamut of um, styles and genres. And so whenever I do, a, even when I do a concert, I try to um, program it so that it, there's a wide variety of um, styles and approaches, but especially on a recording. Um, it's just my interests are very eclectic. And so I always like to cast a wide net for them stylistically, as opposed to just hearing a... This one is actually maybe more... Uh, range in in terms of the variety of compositions than most of my recordings. It leans a little more towards the, the straight ahead um, compositions of mine. But uh, I'm always trying to just stretch the parameters and um, have them maybe listen to some material or styles that they, they don't normally listen to. So how did this journey begin for you? How did you get the jazz bug? Who were kind of some early influences? I really didn't start playing jazz until I was in college. And, um, yeah, it's it's sort of a, it's just, it was just 
somewhat circuitous route. I, I mean, I, when I was studying, and a lot of that was more in the avant-garde um, realm in, in those years, but uh, but I met some great players, and uh, yeah, we had. Uh, I guess a, a real. It wasn't. I wasn't writing. I wasn't composing jazz until I really got got out of school, and um, and I. Uh, when I was 22, I, I moved to Europe for a year and met musicians and started playing there. And um, when I came back to New York, you know, I just uh, um, went, you know, fell into the scene and uh, got got deeper into it. But it didn't, uh, I, I've always had multiple interests there, a, a lot of interest in world music and um, uh, avant-garde classical music. And so uh, it's, uh, I guess jazz is one, just one aspect of it at this point. So what was the first live jazz show that you ever witnessed that blew you away that maybe made you think that would be something you would want to do? Hmm. <clears throat> I'd have to think about that because <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, uh, the, the musician that I first... that. Blue, well, I'm, I'm recording. I mean, you know, I listen to everybody, Miles and Train, and the, the stride pianist, the, you know, the, the entire tradition. But um, I think uh, the guy that really influenced me the most when I first heard him was probably Paul Blay. And I, I heard him in New York a couple of times. I, I thought, wow, that's, I, that that really resonates for me in, in some ways, you know, aesthetically. And, in terms of his, his approach to jazz, was was, was more more open ended and uh, more um, uh, iconoclastic, I guess. And that happened pretty early on, you know, when I first moved back to New York. Yeah. So you know, you've been at this for quite a while now. What's been kind of your key to longevity? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Well, I had uh, I decided when my wife and I had a family that I wasn't going to be going on the road much, and so I I settled into a teaching gig. I mean, I've been teaching at that university level for I don't know thirty three years, and raising two kids. <clears throat> so, uh, and uh, I'm fortunate enough as a jazz musician to have a spouse who is uh, a, a the main breadwinner. So, in terms of survival, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was there wasn't a problem with that. That that affects some musicians' longevity. I also uh, had the great fortune of moving into a large loft in downtown Manhattan when I was 23 years old, and um, we lived there. I lived there for the next 45 years, and. I ran a concert series there for 15 years. All the great modern jazz musicians in the city played there at various points. Um, and so uh, I was able to, to live rather inexpensively and have a large loft and had a studio in it. And so it was really, uh, that I was very fortunate in that regard because um, in New York City, it can be really rough just in terms of trying to get by and make ends meet. I mean, all the music is there. That's not the issue, but but the survival aspect of it is. And that wasn't a. That I was I was fortunate to have that living situation that enabled me to do stuff and not um, and not have to worry about the survival of it. So why do you love jazz? I love improvisation, and I, I love the whole history of it. Um, the, the, the incredible players that have come along and. and, and throughout the entire history of it. And I love the spontaneity, but I also, uh, I got a cerebral side. And, and um, so I'm drawn to a, compos a, a combination of um, maybe uh, elaborate composition and improvisation, be it very structured or totally free. So in, in my pieces, you know, you can find all of that depending on, on uh, what the particular composition is. And I was I was always drawn to it. I uh, I, I I I love folk musics in general, I, uh, world musics I should say. And 
um, I consider jazz a folk music. I mean, it's become much more complex and and, and uh, there's a lot of notation in it, but it's a lot of it's been transmitted orally just the way folk music has uh, throughout the world. So I'm, uh, I feel very akin to that. So everyone out there, David, has a perception of you, family, friends, fans, that you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Uh, I don't know about if, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm usually, when I perform, I'm usually uh, leading my own bands. I haven't done a whole lot of sidemen work. So in that regard, I guess I'm running the show. But uh, um, I don't know. I just try to navigate the, the world and the, the artistic realm, um, finding my own path. Uh, I don't. I haven't done a lot of the traditional jazz musician types of gigs over the years. I haven't done a lot of club work. I haven't done a lot of touring. So I just sort of found my own way, and that in itself is an improvisation. <clears throat> That's a life improvisation. So I, I, I sort of feel comfortable with that. And I think having having uh, um, lived in one place for over four decades uh, has given me a lot of stability to to feel okay with that the the, the wanderings that that my um, um, artistic pursuits. Uh, Seem to uh, um, seem to involve. So, anyone out there that wants to pick up the new album, short stories, or they want to see you live, or anything related to your world, where's the best place to go? Well, in terms of live stuff, I'm not uh, doing a lot of performing at the moment. I'm, I have a couple of gigs in San Francisco in January, but uh, and few local gigs where I live upstate New York, but um, so their best, uh, the best way to do that would be to um, just look, look at my stuff online, and I have, I have a, almost all of my recordings are uploaded now, and um, so they're, they're, they're available, and just for listening and, and purchasing, uh, you know, Bandcamp, that kind of stuff, and Spotify, if you just want to listen. Um, that's probably the best way to hear my music at this point because I'm not doing a whole lot of uh, gigging at the moment. Okay. Very good. David, this has been great. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for talking about the new album and your world of music. I really appreciate it. Sure. My pleasure. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Chats interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to David for his time, energy, and cool. If you want to hear more Neon Jazz interviews, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at YouTube, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Beyond Jazz.